Welcome to Isadora Tutorial 5. In this tutorial, we're going to cover effects, which is probably what brought a lot of you to come to use the program in the first place. So let's dive in. So we've touched on some of the basic features of Isadora to play movies and organize the scenes so that you can set them up to go from one scene to the next. But now I want to cover using effects inside of Isadora, being able to process the video images and manipulate them in real time. To do that, I want to start with a fresh scene. So I'm going to go and click here to the right of the last scene, get the blinking insertion point, and go to the Scenes menu and say Insert Scene. And as we normally do, I'm going to get a movie player and a projector. But don't hook them up yet because we're going to insert an effect between them. I also want you to find here in uh, toolbox number one, an actor called Dots. Now Dots is the first actor that we've seen that actually has a video input on the left of the input and a video output on the right. That's because it actually processes the video and changes the way it looks so that we can pass the image through that effect and come out with a different result. So I'm going to take the movie player and connect it to the input of Dots and then take the output of the Dots module, the video output, and connect that to the video in of the projector. Now, of course, we don't see anything yet because I haven't selected a movie, so I'm going to choose for this example the movie called Dancer.Move. Click on number zero to the left of movie, type two, and hit return. So there you see the dots effect on the dancer. Basically, it's like a half tone in a newspaper. The brighter the image is, the bigger the dot. So that's one way of looking at it, but there's some parameters uh, on the left side of the dots actor that we can change to change the way it looks. First of all, there's one called dot size. That's the maximum dot size that you'll get for any given brightness. If I click on the dot to the left of the words dot size, I can use the slider to make the dot size change. So obviously that gives you a slightly different look. There's also a mode input that can either be dots or boxes. So instead of being circles, they're squares. That has a, quite a different look, obviously. There's also, I'm going to change it back to dots, in fact. And then there's another input called color. If I click that and turn it on, then the color of the dots uh, reflect what the color of the original image was. So those are some of the parameters that you can change. And probably the most visible of those is the dot size. So if we wanted to have an interactive control, let's say, uh, being as we don't have any other sensors handy, we're going to use the mouse. So I go over to group number five, click that, and find a mouse watcher. Bring that down here below the dots actor. I'm going to take the vertical position output of the mouse watcher and connect that to the dot size input. And now you can see that by moving the mouse up and down, I can change the size of the dots. Of course, this could be any kind of sensor once you start working with other kinds of sensors. It's important to point out at this point that in Isadora, a number is a number is a number. Anytime you see a number at the output, you can connect it to a number at some other input and use that number to control something. So in this case, the up and down of the mouse is controlling the size of the dots. Let's try another one. First, I'm going to rename this scene. I'll call this EFX1. And I'm going to click on it, choose Copy. I'm using a right click now. That's one of the things that you can do is do contextual menus uh, by right clicking or control clicking if you're on a Macintosh. Say Copy, go over here, and say Paste. So now I have an exact duplicate of that scene. I'll go ahead right away and change that scene to be called EFX2. And now I'm going to get rid of the dots effect. We're going to try a different one. Now I want to use a different kind of plugin that isn't automatically included with the program, so I need to mention that here. There's an open source uh, video processing plugin standard called FreeFrame. And these are open source plugins, so they can't be included with the commercial version of Isadora. But on the Troikotronics website, you can download um, an installer and you can add these plugins to the plugins that you already get with Isadora. So if you haven't installed those already, I'm going to ask you to pause the tutorial now and actually do it. Assuming that you have those plugins, I'm going to go over to group number one again, and I'm going to get an actor called Fisheye. OK. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to take the movie player output, which is still the dancer, and I'm going to run that through FrishEye into the projector. And also, I'm going to change the movie. For this example, I'd like to use movie number one, which is the movie called Bubbles. Now, at this point, the image looks exactly the same as it did before. In fact, it, the effect isn't doing anything yet. That's because we need to change some of the parameters before it actually has an effect. The first thing I want to ask you to do is to take the max radius input, and let's reduce that and see now, of course, you see that it's a circle, but really it's just like a mat, it's just a perfect circle. If, however, you turn the distortion input up to, let's say, oh, let's say 20, you can see now that it has kind of this curved as if it's on a sphere. So now we have this distorted image, and I'd like to be able to move the center X and center Y again. So I can easily do that by connecting the horizontal position of the mouse watcher to the center X and the vertical position of the mouse watcher to center Y. And now you can see that I can move where the circle is across and it almost looks like you're taking a magnifying glass and running it across the image. right? So again, a different kind of effect entirely with a very different feeling but it's still allowing us to be able to manipulate the images in real time. And finally, a third effect example. So again, I'm going to take this scene down here. I'm going to copy that, click to the right, and then paste. We'll rename that one and call it EFX3. And again, I'm going to delete the effect we already have. I want you to find in group number one now an actor called Motion Blur. Now one thing I did that's very helpful, sometimes when you uh, want to quickly find one of the actors in the list, you can simply type in this search box here. As soon as you do that, any actor that contains the text that you type will appear in the list, and that comes from all eight of the toolboxes. And I also want you to find an actor called Difference, again using the search box to do that. And I'd like you to organize it like so, where you've got the movie player here, Difference actor on top, motion blur, blur below, and the projector over here. Let's take a look at difference first. Now you can sort of see a faint image here with the bubbles, but to make this really clear, again, I'm going to go to the movie of the dancer. So I changed the movie on the movie player to number two. Basically, this compares the current frame and the previous frame, and wherever they're different, you see a white outline. So this kind of gives this nice ghostly image, right? So that in of itself is a useful effect. You can just use that to do what it does. But another uh, thing you can do is to take one effect into another effect into another effect. So I'm going to take this wire now and disconnect it. There's a few ways you can do that, but the simplest way to do it is to click on the wire and hit the delete key. Okay. Then I take the output of the difference actor into motion blur so now I'm going difference into motion blur, and then I go into the projector. And now you can see that not only do you have the ghostly image, but there's persistence. We can make that more uh, visible if you raise the acume input of the motion blur to something like 50 or 55 percent. So that's the way that this looks. But one of the really important points here is that the order of these actors, the filters, completely changes the way it looks. So I want to very quickly, very quickly show you that. I'm going to delete all the connections now, and then I'm going to go from the movie player into motion blur, motion blur into difference, and then into the projector. So we've exchanged the order of the motion blur and difference actors. And now we see this. Now you don't really see the motion blur anymore because it's kind of being hidden by the difference actor but there's a little bit of a ghostly image, and I think that if we turn the acume amount up even more, maybe you'll see a little bit more. This is something that's really worth playing with in Isadora. I mean, one of the things you really have to spend your time doing is simply trying out the effects and trying out different combinations of effects and order the orders of effects, because that's how you really find a unique image or a unique way of seeing something.